Hi, my name is Dan Addy with Detroit Speed. And I'm Mark McDonald, fabricator here at Detroit Speed. And today, we're gonna to show you how to install the Mustang Luma frame. With the engine and the original tubular crossmember removed from the vehicle, along with the entire front suspension and steering, remove the factory strut towers by drilling out the spot welds. Also remove the brackets along the inside of the frame rail by drilling out the spot welds for the factory anti roll bar, engine mounts, and control arms. Additional clearance will be needed for the upper control arm at the rear of the strut tower opening. Measure back 29 and a half inches from the front core support and make a vertical cut line up from the frame rail flange. Blend into the original strut tower opening. Make a vertical cut line at the front of the strut tower opening for additional upper control arm clearance and blend into the strut tower opening. On the outside of the frame rail, mark a horizontal line 3 inches up from the bottom flange of the frame rail, the width of the strut tower opening. Cut the sheet metal along this horizontal line and connect the cut to the strut tower opening. From the rear of the hole where the anti roll bar bracket was located, measure back 1 and 1 8 inches. Mark a cut line along the frame rail brace that needs to be trimmed for the aluminum frame cradle. Remove that section of the brace and grind all sharp corners that were cut. Locate the original tubular crossmember mounting nuts along the bottom side of the frame rails. Use the two larger holes in the aluminum frame cradle along with the provided half inch flange bolts to bolt the aluminum frame to the vehicle. Adjust the cradle position so it's located in the center and square to the vehicle frame. Lightly tighten the two mounting bolts to hold it in place. Cool. Using the provided drill guide and extended quarter inch drill bit, Drill through the top of the frame rail from the bottom using the aluminum frame cradle as a template for four of the crush sleeve locations on each frame rail. Remove the half inch flange bolts and remove the aluminum frame cradle from the vehicle. Drill out the front two holes on the bottom side of each frame rail with a 1 and 1 8 inch hole saw. The rear two holes will need to be drilled out with a 1 and 5 8 inch hole saw. For the rear holes, 
The crushed tubes inside the frame rail for the original steering box and the idler arm will need to be removed. Drill out all four holes on the top side of each frame rail with a one and one eighth inch hole saw. Place the frame rail adapter plates on the top side of the frame rail. From the bottom side of the frame rail, install the provided crush sleeves through the frame rail and into the adapter plates. The front two crush sleeves are the same length and the rear two crush sleeves are longer going back to match the height of the frame rail. With the crush sleeves holding the adapter plates in place, drill a pilot hole for the coilover crush sleeves through the frame rail. Place the drill guide in the middle hole on the top side of the adapter plates and drill through the frame rail with the extended quarter inch drill bit. Remove the crush sleeves and adapter plates from the frame rails. Using a one and one inch hole saw, drill through the top and bottom side of the frame rails. Install the coilover crush sleeves through the bottom of the frame rails and into the adapter plates. Reinstall the other four crush sleeves in each frame rail. Tighten all crush sleeves into the adapter plates. They should float in the frame rails as they should not be tight or clamped against the frame rails. Position the aluminum frame cradle underneath the vehicle using the half inch flange bolts from the bottom side of the frame rails. Center and square the cradle to the vehicle. The frame rails need to be prepped for welding at this point. Install the provided 7 16 inch bolts through the adapter plates. Tighten the bolts using the provided 7 16 flange lock nuts. Verify that the adapter plates in the top of the frame rails are level. Tack weld the adapter plates to the top of the frame rails. Tack weld the crush sleeves in place to the bottom of the frame rails. Remove the aluminum frame cradle from the vehicle and finish weld the crush sleeves to the frame rails. Weld the front edge of the adapter plates to the frame rails. Plug weld the adapter plates to the frame rails through the 12 machine holes in each adapter plates. Finish weld the perimeter of the adapter plates to the frame rails. Measure back 14 inches and 7 and a quarter inches from the front edge of the adapter plates and mark the outer frame rails. At the 14 inch mark, draw a cut line along the seam at the bottom frame rails. Draw a vertical center line on the outer frame rails at the 7 and a quarter inch mark. Draw another cut line along the frame rail edge to be removed. Cut this section of the outer frame rails. Grind this seam smooth and weld the two layers of sheet metal together. Place the jounce bumper bracket against the outer frame rail and center it with a 7 and a quarter inch center line. The bracket should rest on the frame rail seam that was just welded. Plug weld and perimeter weld the bracket to the frame rail. Repeat this step for the opposite frame rail. Reinstall the aluminum frame cradle using the provided hardware. Install the lower control arms into the aluminum frame cradle using the provided half inch flange bolts and flange lock nuts. The bump stop pad will be located on the front tube of the control arms. 
Install the provided half inch hardware and torque to 65 foot pounds. Install the jounce bumper spacer onto the jounce bumper and install it to the bracket. Verify that the jounce bumper will contact the bump stop pad on the lower control arms. Tighten the provided 5 16 nylock nut and washer. Repeat this step for the opposite side of the vehicle. Install the composite Delrin anti roll bar bushings into the aluminum frame cradle on both sides. Before installing the anti roll bar, use a spray lubricant or grease on the ID of the bushings. Install the anti roll bar into the composite bushings. Center the anti roll bar in the cradle. The bar should be protruding out from the bushings approximately 2 and 11 16 inches on each side. Install the anti roll bar split lock collars onto the anti roll bar. Apply medium strength blue Loctite to the threads and position the collars up against the anti roll bar bushings on each side. With the heads of the bolts accessible from the bottom, torque to 14 foot pounds. Place two of the upper control arm bracket shims on top of each frame rail adapter plate so that all the holes line up. Use anti seize on the provided 7 16 flange bolts. Install the speed line adjusters in the front and rear mounting slots. The nominal caster setting is the zero position on the adjusters located in the center groove on the speed line frame. Place two of the coilover mount shims on each upper control arm bracket. Install the coilover mount brackets with the provided 5 16 flange bolts on each side of the frame rail. The coilover mount ears are angled towards the front of the vehicle when installed. Install the provided 7 16 inch bolts down through the top of the coilover mount on each side and tighten. Repeat this step for the opposite side of the vehicle. Locate the left and right hand side upper control arm. They will be marked with an L for the driver's side and an R for the passenger side on the top of the ball joint mounts. Install the speed line adjusters onto the provided 7 16 flange bolts. The nominal caster setting of the adjuster is 1 8 inch inboard offset in the first outboard adjuster frame groove. Using red Loctite, install the 7 16 flange lock nuts and torque to 35 foot pounds. Repeat this step for the opposite side of the vehicle. Assemble the coolover shocks and springs by removing the snap ring and upper spring perch from the shocks. Install the Torrington bearing set. Install the thrust washer first, followed by the roller bearing, and then another thrust washer. DSE recommends using extreme pressure grease on the bearings. Then install the spring over the coilover shock, followed by the upper spring perch. Install the snap ring onto the shock and lock the upper spring perch into place. Install the shock into the upper coilover mount with the shock body up. Install the tapered spacers on each side of the upper shock monoball to install the provided half inch flange bolt and flange lock nut. Install the shock into the lower control arm using the provided half inch bolt and spacer through the lower monoball and install the half inch nylock nut. Tighten the half inch hardware. Repeat this step for the opposite side. Install the spindle assemblies by installing it into the upper control arm first and then into the lower control arm. Using red Loctite, install the lower ball joint castle nut and torque to 20 foot pounds plus an additional 180 degrees. Install the cotter pin. Turn and position the ball joints so the cotter pin locates from front to rear to ease installation. Install the upper ball joint castle nut and torque to 40 foot pounds. Install the cotter pin. Repeat this step for the opposite side of the vehicle. Install the rack and pinion mounting spacers into the counter bores of the cradle rack mounts. Install the provided 916 long bolts and washers into the rack and pinion crush sleeves. Use NACs on the bolts and install the rack and pinion to the cradle using the 916 flange lock nuts. Measure the end of the threads to the edge of the jam nut. This measurement should be approximately one inch per side. 
Install the outer tie rod ends onto the rack and pinion. Make sure they are equal distant on each side to center the steering. Install the outer tie rod onto the steer arm. Install the castle nut and torque to 35 foot pounds and install the cotter pin. Repeat this step for the opposite side of the vehicle. Using NICs in the threads of the anti roll bar end link, fully thread one end of the anti roll bar end link into the threaded hole on the end of the anti roll bar arm. Slide the anti roll bar arm onto the splines of the anti roll bar. Install the provided 3 8 bolt, nut, and washer into the anti roll bar arm with red Loctite and tighten. Insert the anti roll bar end link into the mounting bracket on the lower control arm. Tighten the end link into the anti roll bar arm with an 18 millimeter wrench. Make sure the anti-roll bar arms are timed properly so they are lined up with each other on the anti-roll bar splines. The Alua frame is now assembled. Refer to the torque specifications in the instructions and make sure all hardware is properly torqued. Lubricate all points on the front frame with quality chassis grease.